Hello my friends and welcome, let's go briefly for the front lines update. According to the Institute of the War Resources, Ukrainian army moved towards Novoprokopivka a lot. I would say that Ukraine is now bordering Novoprokopivka from two of the directions, over here and over here. It is still early to say and then the Ukrainian army will get Novoprokopivka under control, but I guess in around two, maximum three weeks. Even though Ukraine cuts this red pie piece by piece, but the elevation, as you can see, is 173 meters. This is the downgrounds, so indeed it is hard to achieve that goal. But the Ukrainian army, as you can see, moves and moves every day. No new movement towards Verboa was detected recently, so Ukraine pushes towards the south. Also, we have the update from the Deep State military map. Finally, they confirmed that Ukraine crossed this river over here and went to Novomayorsk. In this place, the river is very narrow, so it's quite logical to cross it. Ukraine also pushes towards Novodonetsk. The gray area of fighting is already on the other shore of this small river, but there is quite a big lake. Strangely, but there is no new movement towards the Donetsk airfield, but Russia says that the situation for them in Opetna is critical and the fighting is ongoing just in that village. I expect that they will perform the goodwill gesture and Ukraine will take this territory till this river and the lake line. Today the Ukrainian army command reported the success near to Robotina, yes we saw it, and also near to Bakhmut. Maybe with a new military map update we're gonna see it. On this video you may see the operation of the engineering equipment that was given to Ukraine by our Western allies. That is probably T-64 tank and this vehicle is digging that tank out from the mud. This is what we need for sure and Russia do not have the military analogs of that engineering equipment usually. That is why they use the civilian excavators they call it. Russia modernizes their T-80 tanks against the drone attacks, mostly the FPV drones and against the javelin shells as well. They have probably the Contact 5 armor over here and here is Contact 1, so the turret is well protected from above. Yes, it may look strange and crazy, some say funny, but nevertheless this thing is quite effective against the FPV drones, not sure about javelins. Also Russia has the new project to defend their airplanes, those improvised nets. You can see the old written off Suhoi 27 and probably they'll conduct some of the tests and drills trying to hit this airplane using drones. So indeed, Russian military bloggers say that the situation for them in Opetna is critical, the fighting is ongoing over there, some even say that Russia perform the goodwill gesture from that village. But still we need to wait for the confirmation, because those news are coming from the Russian channels. Unfortunately, some of the terrible news are coming from the Bakhmut area. There, the civilian car was ambushed by the Russian army, and unfortunately, three of the volunteers lost their lives. Those were from Sweden, Canada and Spain. They're not mercenaries, they're not military, those are just volunteers who help the locals. Ok, Biden edges closer to decision of supplying Ukraine with long-range missiles like Atakims. Come on Biden, you can do it! According to our intelligence services, Russia moved more Iskander systems to the border with Ukraine. By the way, Russia started the construction of the new military base close to the Finland border. Speaking about the unique Russian radar Predel yeah, the price of which is 200 million dollars. For you just to understand, this is the same price for 60 of the T-90M, the best Russian tanks. Just recently Ukraine kaboomed two of those radar units. There was the big Russian drone attack on Ukraine last night. Also, Kyiv area was attacked, including my hometown Borispol. 26 out of 33 drones were shot down by the Ukrainian defense. Unfortunately, ground explosions were reported. According to the Wall Street Journal, Ukraine expects to fly the F 16s fighter jets in combat missions during this winter. Very soon. Ukraine and Sweden are planning to produce at least 1000 CV-90 armored vehicles. It is good from one side, but from the other one 
It's the sign that this war may continue for a very long time. President Zelensky, by the way, today said that he is ready for the long-term conflict and the Ukrainian society also have to prepare for it. He says that Putin will not win if this war will continue for a very long time. I also agree with that, but we're gonna lose many more people. Putin just blind bastard, why just not to withdraw the forces from Ukraine? They will lose in any case, as Soviet Union lost in Afghanistan. The interesting picture, it was taken during the meeting, and here you can see the detailed maps of the military conflict the Ukrainian and Russian forces. Mark Milley is also there. Guys, just a brief update for today. It was quite hard for me to record this video because I haven't slept the last night. I was on a trip to France. My friends, now press the like to this video and if you want to support my job, there will be some of the links in the video description just below. Special thanks for my Patreon supporters and the sponsors of my YouTube channel. Guys, you are awesome. My friends, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.